Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, Everything Medicare Podcast Nation? Hey, this is Christian Brindle, wherever you are and however you might be listening to me today. Thank you so much for taking the time. And folks, today, this is episode 254. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Christian Brindle. I'm your host. Every single week, me and my company bring you a podcast episode that's distributed to about 20 different podcast platforms as well as YouTube on video where we discuss your Medicare your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. And as I mentioned, this is episode 254, and we are starting to approach the Medicare annual election period. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, the Medicare annual election period stands for um, AEP for short, is what they call it in the industry. And essentially what it is, is it's a time period where people on Medicare have a free-for-all. This is what I mean. If you are not on a Medicare Advantage plan, you can transition into one. If you're already on a Medicare Advantage plan, you can transition from one Medicare Advantage plan to another or out of one to original Medicare. If you're going, if you're on a Part D prescription drug plan with maybe a Medicare supplement plan, you can move from one Part D prescription drug plan to another. So essentially, that's kind of what it what it is. Um, It really doesn't have anything to do with the Medicare supplement plan. You can change those any time of the year, 12 months out of the year, um, as long as you can pass health questions and underwriting and the criteria for the new company. Um, The only reason why a Medicare supplement would be relevant during during the annual election period would be if you were moving from a Medicare Advantage plan into original Medicare with a Part D prescription drug plan, and then you also picked up a supplement to go with it. Um, Any change you make during open enrollment during the annual election period does not take effect until January 1st of the upcoming year. So that's essentially what you have to keep in mind and understand. Um, Every single year during the annual election period, um, and by the way, the dates for the annual election period are October 15th through December 7th each and every year. Those dates have not changed for some time, um, and that's the time period that you have, right? The changes that are made are typically made by Medicare Advantage plans and Part D prescription drug plans. Medicare supplements never change their benefits. Um, They do change their premiums, but not necessarily during the open enrollment period. Now, changes can be a lot of different things. They can come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and, and appearances. They could be a plan raising its premium, but they could also be a plan lowering their premium. It could be a plan adding a benefit, but it could also be a plan reducing or taking away a benefit. It could be raising copays, lowering copays, entering a new market, maybe potentially pulling their plan out of a market. So a lot of different things can happen, but primarily what you're typically going to find is the annual election period, for the most part, has to do with Medicare Advantage plans. And I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek on what you can expect going into next year. Now, I cannot talk about anything too specific because any information that I do know, I'm not allowed to really share in terms of companies, plan details, benefits, anything like that, or any specific numbers of any kind. There's a lot of things I still do not know as of this point, and I won't probably know for the next month or two. Um, But that being said, what we're typically looking for is just a little bit of a vague um, direction on kind of what I believe that the market is going to go in into the next year, into 2022. Um, And these episodes are always very anticipated and always very, very helpful for people that are on Medicare. Um, We have a very large audience, and you, you, the audience, are fantastic, but we have a very large audience in terms of um, people on Medicare that tune in to get get updates on what's going on with their plan and how to really uh, make good decisions with it. What I would say is the most um, important aspect of this year is expect 
Medicare Advantage to continue to grow and expand. Let me explain. You will see, a majority of you, in my opinion, will likely see more plans being brought into your market with more insurance companies. Insurance companies that have already been there in a lot of places around the country will probably have newer plans, more plans available. A couple of years ago in some markets, there might have been companies that had two plans, maybe three plans. Now they're going to have six or seven different plan options available for you. Um, the other thing is that the, for those of you that live in incredibly rural areas, because a lot of our audience does find themselves in those parts of the country, what I mean by rural areas is that you're not so much in a metropolitan area to where you're going to find a lot of Medicare Advantage plan options anyway. Usually the metropolitan areas like in New York, a lot of places in Texas like a Dallas, right, Miami, Los Angeles, they're going to be the areas that have a litany of Medicare Advantage options available because all the insurance companies want to be competitive in those highly populated areas. And that just makes sense. That's just business and economics. But sometimes in the lessly populated areas, the very rural areas, some of the kind of the areas in the country, if you will, the boonies, if we'll call it, not to offend anybody, but it, I don't know, it's just, in my opinion, it's a nice way to think of it. Um, what you'll typically find is there's either little Medicare Advantage options available, or in some areas, ultimately, there's very little to none at all. And... I believe that we will continue to see more Medicare Advantage plan options reach into those areas. <clears throat> and you'll start to see more options than you did in the past. The Medicare Advantage market is ever growing, ever changing. I've come on this platform and said it before that I predict in the next 10 years, we will move so far into Medicare Advantage. And I feel like long term, that's what the government wants to do is they, they want to do a managed care option um, system and kind of slowly but surely kind of phase out original Medicare. That's just my um, prediction, kind of my view on what I see in terms of trends and communications. But I don't have any stone, you know, stone clear knowledge on that, that that is exactly what's going to happen. It's just my guess, um, my, my professional guess, if you will. But keep that in mind. It is, take it with a grain of salt. But it would not surprise me in the slightest. If that is the way things end up going. And so I would say the main thing that you have to understand is Medicare Advantage plans are going to continue to get better in a lot of ways. They're going to have more benefits available. We're starting to see in a litany of plans too that do things that they did not do years ago or only was available in a couple of select markets. You're starting to see more plans that will do what's known as Medicare Part B givebacks. Medicare Part B giveback, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is essentially when a Medicare Advantage plan will essentially reimburse a portion of your Medicare Part B premium, which in 2021 is $148.50 a month. They might do 30 bucks a month back, 40, 50. Essentially what it does is it lowers your, your the amount that you pay on a monthly basis. So let's say they did 50 bucks a month. Well, you'd be about $98.50 a month that you'd be paying for Part B at that point just for being on the plan. Now, not all plans have that available. And actually, in, in most markets, it's more of a rare thing, if anything else. There's only probably a couple plans that have it. And what you'll typically find is the plans that have it in a lot of the rural markets or smaller markets um, might not have prescription drug coverage. So you got to watch out for that. You don't want to sign up for a plan just because of that. You want to make sure it has everything else as well. But we're starting to see more plans become available that do have everything else as well that does a benefit like that. Now, that is usually, either that or Medicaid, depending on the commercial you're seeing, is what a lot of these big, um, actually, you know, I believe borderline criminal commercials are talking about. But they're not available in every market, and they certainly don't do a whole the whole $148 back in your Social Security check. Very few plans do that in very few, few markets. Um, but they might do 30 a month. They might do 20, they might do 10, they might do 50, they might do 80. And I believe that we will probably see more areas have those kind of plans available. Dental keeps expanding. 
Plans seem to have more and more and more dental every year. Vision, hearing, more of it all. And we're just seeing really, you know, more plan availability. Medicare Advantage is on the way up, folks. It's not on the way down, like some people would want you to believe. And I believe the people that want you to believe that it's on the way down are just trying to push their biased agenda on you. You really just have to understand that it's going to continue to get more and more and more um, attractive as time goes on. Year in and year out, the plans seem to have more benefits and more attractive benefits than they did the year before. Overall, in general. Not saying that there's not saying that every single plan looks incredibly attractive. Some, you know, look better than others depending on your situation. But I would anticipate very little change um, other than the fact that you should see Medicare Advantage plans grow, expand, add benefits, and the whole nine yards. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you found it insightful. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a look. We'll be able to share a lot more specifics with you on what the actual numbers of things might be um, as they become available to us and as we're allowed to share them. A lot of those episodes won't be able to air until after October 1st. Um, But if you missed my interview last week um, that we did for episode 253 um, with Andy and Andy Stamis, um, you guys should go check that out. Andy Stamis and Medicare Mindset. We had a great conversation, um, and that's something that you're going to want to essentially get plugged into. So anyway, folks, um, appreciate your time. appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for tuning in, and um, we'll be back with you next time. Have a great week. We'll be back next Monday. Talk soon.